Remember, remember the uh, the eighteenth of November. Yeah, the rhyme really doesn't work that well when you uh, when you get this a little bit later than you expected. But yeah, I was hoping to get this for the fifth November, but it didn't ship in time. So oh well, never mind. Anyway, here it is. This is the V Mask One Twelve Scale Figure by Bullethead. <laughs> Okay, as you can see, it comes with its own little tiny shipper box, which is pretty cool. Just bullet head BH004 on there. Nothing else, let's pull it out. Let's pull it out of the packaging. Oh, voila. That's a pretty cool box actually for a 112 scale figure. You can see it's got the uh, V mask right in, in uh, spot foil on the front. It's also got a spot UV black V logo at the back. And if I'm honest, that, that's really where they should have stopped with this box because that would have been really nice it would have looked very classy but unfortunately they put those really tacky low res flames on the bottom there and then they put a 112 scale logo which looks i'll be honest with you bullet head that's terrible i don't know it just looks really tacky like your kid did it in photoshop one night and then up here you've got the bullet head logo which again, I argue to this day, is uh, not very good. And then we come around to the side and we can see they've actually put, again, the Spot UV, they've got V for Vendetta mask just there. And it's really cool. And again, should have stopped there because you then get this really sort of tacky text here. The past can't hurt you anymore unless you let it. <laughs> well, okay. And there's the bottom. It's the same at the top and honestly, this is probably the nicest looking bit of the box. And then on the back, you get this really tacky photoshopped V for Vendetta picture on the back. You should have left it blank or just gone around and done what you did at the front without the flames. But that's it. Okay, let's open it up and have a look what we get inside. Inside you get a foam insert. I love me and a foam insert, you know that. Then you pull it away and you can see the figure inside. You get some hands, a hat, a rose and his knives. Okay, let's open this up and have a look at exactly what we get. And here he is straight out of the packaging and you can see that it's it's a pretty nice figure overall. The plastic is on the head, obviously. Um, I've got some issues with the cape. That's not amazing, if I'm honest. But he comes with a nice slew of accessories, a hat, and he can stand up on his own pretty well. First of all, we're gonna try and reach up and pull this head off. And the reason I'm taking the head off here is because Obviously, if you try and pull the plastic off, it's going to ruffle this um, synthetic hair. So what I did was I pulled it off and I'm just going to push the plastic down so that that way the plastic can come off and it can keep the hair flush to the head as much as possible. Whoops. So while we've got the head off, let's have a look at it. And that's pretty nice, if I'm honest. I mean, the hair is a little thick. It's slightly unwieldy, but, you know, you can always futz with that and get that sorted. But that mask looks really good. They've even blushed out the cheeks here. Got the eyes darkened perfectly. There's not a lot of weathering on it. I'm not sure if that's deliberate or not. But still, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, if you looked at that straight away, you'd think that's V for Vendetta. There's no mistaking it. And I was really worried that they wouldn't be able to paint that moustache and little beardy bit right. But they seem to have got it bang on, to be honest. And just quickly, I've put the head back on and I've brought the cape down. And we can see that this cape is just, it's just a random piece of cloth. And the problem is it's a little too thick for 112 scale, plus a little stiff for 112 scale. It just sort of flops down. There isn't much you can do with it. In fact, if you try and come in here and try and stretch this out, it just keeps flopping back and you've really got to futz with it and get it down and get it moving. And you can just about bring it back, but it's not great, I mean, that, that's probably the biggest flaw of this whole figure. I can tell you straight off the bat that it is that cape. It's just, mm, I wish it was a little bit better, but into 112 scale, maybe you can't do better. And now I've quickly taken the cape off and you can see that there is this really sort of nice belt underneath it here. It's got this slightly uh, thick-ish jacket. It's pretty nicely stitched. There is a little bit of a, a glue issue here it's sort of come away a little bit here so that's a shame might have to get some fabric glue and try and get that held down a little bit more but you can see the belt is very well made 
I quite like that, very nice thin pleather. The dagger holders are pretty cool looking. A little bit uh, silvery, like plastic silvery rather than metal silvery, but that's okay. Stitching around the arm is pretty nice. Goes all the way around the back. There's no weathering on this guy, really. I think he could have done with a little bit of weathering, but he's also a, quite a tidy freak if I remember the film well. As we're going along, you can see that hair is starting to sort of puff out a little bit at the bottom, and he's looking more like Veronica than V for Vendetta at the moment. Actually, I'm just starting to realize my wife has a very similar haircut. Oh, although she doesn't smile as much as this, and I can't blame her, she's married to me. But um, if we can come down, we can see that the uh, the jacket sort of moves down into the hands and the hands go over the fabric here. And the trousers are quite well fitted to this uh, body, this 112 scale body. I actually really like this because it is 112 scale, but it's actually like a, a 1 tick scale body with all the articulation you'd expect, which is really cool. And the joints are really nice and stiff. But you come down, you see the trousers go into the boots there. There's no ankle pivot, but uh, yeah, tell you what, while we're here, Let's do the articulation. Oops. As you bring this down, you know, the um, head tends to pop off. So when you're moving this around, it gets restricted and it can't get on there. And as I was putting the head back on, you can see the hair's puffing out again. Shut up, Veronica. Stop looking out your window on a Saturday night and looking at all the neighbors, you nosy bitch. Straight away, the articulation, like I said, this, this pops out if you try and push it any far further forward. He does have some neck rocking, but again, it pops out a lot. Come on, get in there. But he can turn to a reasonable extent, and there is a little bit of uh, head neck pivot there, but unfortunately it does pop out quite a lot. That is a bit disappointing. Shoulder-wise, the arms can come up all the way up there. There we go. The shoulders can come all the way forward, all the way back. There is a bicep swivel just there. Double bend in the arms so we can go up past 90 degrees. There is a wrist joint there, but it can only swivel just because these gloves are restricting the actual wrist pegs. Torso test, it moves a little bit forward and back, but there is some restriction in the padding of the suit. But it can go back a little bit and lean back a little bit more. But he's quite a, a, a stand upright kind of guy. He's not someone who crouches down and bends forward much. And then there is a torso waist turn there. And then the leg can come up to about there. There is a little bit of thigh rotation, but it's not as much as I thought there would be. And there's double bend in the knee. And then the ankles can turn left and right, but again, no ankle pivot as, as such. And it just popped off. Weren't so super tight. He looks like he's got leggings on. You go. Looks like he's doing a rendition of fame. You go, girl. I mean, there is some flex in the boot there, but uh, I don't think that's going to stay. It's just going to return to the center anyway. So, yeah, not much ankle pivot, I'm afraid. And he can do the splits to about there. He can nearly kick himself in the bum. And just a very quick warning, that peg inside the neck there is actually is a double-ended neck peg. So it can move around. So be careful because as you're pushing it in, it can bend to the side and then the head won't go in properly. So be careful, that's not a fixed neck peg in there. It's movable on both ends. Oh, and before I forget, he does have a nice butterfly joint there. So the arms can go really far in which is cool. Okay, and just to let you know, I was putting the daggers in and these are really good. They work pretty well, but they sometimes aren't stuck down perfectly. So what ends up happening is you have to wiggle them around to try and get those daggers in. And that can cause some problems because I think if anything's gonna break on this figure first, it's most likely going to be these tiny little loops on the belt, because they're only gonna be stuck on there so much because they're so small. So it's very likely you want to be very careful putting the daggers in. Don't rush it because you may end up ripping one of these off the belt very easily. And here he is. I've just put him into a sort of action-y pose, but because of those ankles not being able to rock properly, it does look a little bit unstable. But he still stands pretty well. But um, you can see these uh, knives are pretty cool. I'll just pull one of the daggers up for you to have a look at. A little bit of a bad paint app around the handle there. It's sort of slightly silver here. So it looks like they haven't got the uh, black paint all the way around the handle properly. It's quite a nice silver chrome. 
there's no lumpy bits on it it actually looks quite smooth quite reasonable they've even put the little bit on the end here fits quite nicely and it comes with a very nice looking rose very well painted looks really cool up there it's even got some details in the leaves there the stems okay there's no thorns or anything but that's all right i'll forgive it and he comes with this hand that sort of really sort of classily and gently holds it it's rather dainty actually i think it works really well for the character so it is nicely character specific so speaking of hands let's see if we can swap one of these hands out for this one and see how much of a problem it is so let's quickly just reach in pops off oh that was easy that was very easy very surprised by that but that looks like a very tiny peg there so be very careful about that it does look like it has some wrist swivel but you won't want to use it with this guy simply because it's of the fixed gloves here one of the issues i think i'm going to have is fitting this clothing back onto the uh yeah it's starting to find it very difficult to try and put the glove on with this hand because it's starting to push the sleeve upwards like that and here he is holding that rose like the suave mofo that he is hand behind his back i really like how you can actually get the hand reaching around his back like that that's pretty cool and he just looks quite classy doesn't he but the only problem i've got really with this whole thing is this cape it's just so flat and straight and there's no character to it there's no movement in it there's no fraying or weathering or anything it is simply just a cut bit of fabric stuck at the front here and you're supposed to stick that around his neck and it does cover him pretty well but it sort of covers up a lot of the detail without giving anything back in terms of personality so yeah that's my biggest gripe with this figure i really like the articulation though the articulation is fantastic on this guy minus the ankle pivot which is a shame they could have actually separated the top of the boots from the bottom of the boot that would have helped us quite a bit i really like the detail on this buckle here i absolutely love the daggers i think they're super cool it is, a, it is a shame that sometimes the handles aren't as well painted as I think they could be. But again, if he's holding them or they're being posed in his belt here, it's not really that garish. Uh, another little gripe is that the hair is going to become unwieldy after a while. It's bad enough in 1.6 scale. In 1.12 scale, when a little bit of dust settles on this guy, it's going to start getting into that hair and it's going to start irritating it and thickening it out and making it fluffy. So just be careful. Regular dusting is probably what would help with that. I absolutely love this mask. I think this is so cool. They've really gotten down the fine details of it. Although there is a slight issue here with the uh, bangs or the uh, fringe. It's a little bit wonky here, but you know what? I'll forgive it. Many people wouldn't, but I will. And the clothes don't hinder the articulation much at all, which is really good. And he comes with everything I think you would want from a V from Vendetta figure, other than a, you know, a slightly shaved head Natalie Portman. It is a shame that this didn't come out on the 5th of November and I could have actually done a video for then, for Guy Fawkes Night, but you know, it is what it is. At least it got here in the end anyway, so I can't complain. And here he is next to some Mezco figures. We've got Tiger Stripe Wolverine, Punisher, Cyclops, and Batman. And I think they all look pretty well scaled together, if you ask me. And here he is next to Mezco's Movie Maniacs. We've got Jason, Michael, and Ash. Again, they scale really well. And here he is next to the Revel Tech Gambit. We're talking Marvel Legends Captain America, and we're talking Figma Guyver. And here he is next to the Great Twins T800 112 scale figure. And here he is next to oh, my Spider-Man. Uh, I couldn't fit that on the shelf over there. I didn't want to fancy moving in it. So I moved him to them. And I have to say, all in all, I really like the figure. I think Bullethead did a great job with this guy. I think the simplistic mask works really well in 112 scale. I quite like the hat. It is a little bit plastic fantastic but it still works. The hair can be mildly unwieldy at times, but you know, just lick your finger and move it around. It should work a little better. I really like the daggers. I think they're really cool, especially in 112 scale to get metal daggers is really something special. And I really like the uh, belt design and the buckle. The clothing is pretty good if it's just a little bit stiff, but the downside, the main downside of the whole thing is that cape. The cape can really get in the way and it's very hard to futz with. It's just so stiff and rigid that when you fold it around, it just billows out again like it is now. Overall, yeah, I really like the figure. 
Good shout by Bullethead to do this. I think in 112 scale it really works. I actually think I'd prefer to have this in 112 scale rather than 1.6 scale. I tend to save 1.6 scale for like my diehard. I absolutely love the character type figures. So overall, yeah, I'm very pleased with this guy. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. And if you could do me a favor now, if you can get the fuck out of my cave. I inspire arrived in the post.